TCP has been around a long time, and TCP has had to survive through a changing world. It's interesting to be working on transport protocols or thinking about transport protocols today because we're actually seeing, after decades of relying on TCP, a lot of work that's starting to rethink some of the assumptions and some of the design principles of TCP. So let's look briefly, hopefully, at a long list of problems that, uh, to, that arise with TCP um, that could cause problems for today's computers. So one of the first issues with TCP is this problem that, that's known as slow start. So remember, when TCP gets going, um, you know, it's like it, it starts off really slow and then it's like raising the speed slowly, slowly, slowly. And the problem with this is when TCP is used to download small amounts of data, which is frequently uh, common when you're downloading web pages, you never get to full speed. It's like you're accelerating really slowly down a really short street, and by the time you get to the end, you've gotten there, but you could have gotten there a lot faster if you just slammed on the gas right away. Uh, so the slow start problem, now for large objects, like huge files or videos, eventually TCP gets to the point where it's using all the network capacity, and that's awesome. But for small objects, the slow start means that frequently TCP is not downloading things as fast as it could. Okay, problem number one. Problem number two, something called known as head of the line blocking. So one of the solutions to the slow start problem is to actually try to reuse the same TCP connection to send a bunch of different things. So let's say I have five images on a web page. Rather than sending those images separately in small TCP connections that would suffer from the slow start problem, I can open a single connection and send the images one by one. Now here's the problem, right? So this is an image on the web page, this is an image, this is an image, this is an image, this is an image. Um, if part of one of these images is lost, TCP will not continue to deliver other parts of the stream until it can repair this problem. So any sort of loss that occurs in, in part of the stream will cause the rest of the stream to block. And this is even worse when you're doing something like watching a video. So you've probably seen this before, you know, when you're on YouTube or whatever and the video will sort of stall. Um, part of the problem is that even though there's other useful parts of the video that you could watch, the TCP has already retrieved, because it's really dedicated to delivering things in order, it can't get there. And so TCP gets stuck with this one image that's broken, despite the fact that I could display these other images. I've already got them, right? So I could start putting the page together, I could display those other images, but TCP won't even deliver that data up to the web browser until all of it arrives. The second uh, fundamental design problem with TCP that's sort of changing in the modern world is that TCP assumes that con losses are caused by congestion. And this is an assumption that worked really well on the wired internet because it typically is true. Congestion at routers is what causes packets to be lost. But in the wireless world, there's a lot of loss that occurs due to just sort of wireless interference. Now, if there's congestion at a router, the right thing for TCP to do is to slow down and send traffic more slowly. However, if there's a wireless drop, that might not be the right thing to do anymore. You might just want to keep sending at the same rate and assume that the wireless medium is sort of a little bit unreliable, but that's okay. So TCP makes an assumption that when it sees loss, it should slow down right away. And that assumption isn't necessarily true anymore on today's wireless connections. The other problem that TCP suffers from is that it takes a long time to establish a TCP connection because of this handshake that it has to do with the, uh, between the sender and receiver. Now, this was okay in the past, uh, but now that we're seeing the internet expand all over the world, um, we're actually seeing higher latency connections, particularly from devices uh, in certain parts of the world where uh, the internet connections aren't very good. And so if the round trip time to get back and forth to the server is 250 milliseconds and TCP has to do is complicated handshake, then sometimes it can take a long time even just to get a TCP connection started. And that's very frustrating. The last problem is something interesting. It's something called buffer bloat. Um, so as memory has gotten cheaper, routers within the core internet have started to be provisioned with a lot more memory. And routers are also, remember, the internet, TCP and the internet are sort of co-evolving. TCP is trying to adjust to the modern internet, but the design of the interior of the internet and the routing layers is also been informed by TCP's behavior. So routers know that TCP kind of freaks out if a packet gets lost. It will really dramatically slow the connection down and it takes a while for that connection to get back up to its normal 
normal speed. So as memory has gotten cheaper, routers have been provisioned with larger and larger and larger buffers where they can hold more and more and more data. Now you would think that would be a good thing, right? They're holding, they're trying to store data so that they don't drop packets and TCP doesn't freak out um, and slow down. However, the problem is, is those buffers get bigger, the delay at the router gets larger and larger and larger. And it becomes harder for TCP to figure out whether or not a packet has been dropped. Because it's possible that a packet that hasn't arrived for a while is just stuck in a really huge buffer on a router somewhere, still waiting to be transmitted, uh, but just hasn't gotten there yet. Um, and so, you know, in, in today's modern world, again, I mean, TCP is, is a beautiful protocol. It's a venerable protocol. It served us really well for decades. But the world is changing, and there are aspects of TCP that are uh, problematic, that are causing people to rethink uh, new protocols at the transport layer.